I broke through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ecrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. I'm Spencer, and today I'm joined by Juan Carlos Fresnadillo. That's Fresnadio, correct. Um, who is the director of Intruders. Um, you might remember him from his work on 28 Weeks Later, the immensely big production that followed 28 Days Later. Um, I've been wondering where you've been for a while, so I was excited <laughs> to see this film was screening at uh, South by Southwest, which is, I guess, the North American premiere is yep. what it is. Yep. Um, to describe Intruders, I guess it is uh, how a story of how secrets turn into nightmares, and that's played out in two countries, Spain and England, yes. essentially. Um, you sort of briefly spoke about this when you did the intro before the film, but this is somewhat inspired by your own life and you know how secrets, I guess, manifested with you. Uh, how exactly did you go about turning that concept into a movie? I think th this movie uh, belongs to my personal side. I mean, I, I decided to play my career with you know with two with two different games, you know, which is commercial movies and personal movies, and I, and I try to take advantage of of that situ of every situation, you know, and and after making twenty weeks later and and going through different projects you know and 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 that kind of that thing called development hell mm. i decided to play by myself something that it that it triggers um passion from my from my heart and and then the story of intruders showed up when we discuss a, a lot you know especially with my producers with they participate in a very creative process in, in at that at that early stage about the, the 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 fear in the family and how sometimes the fear is something that you inherit from them mm. and how the fear sometimes is a legacy that you unconsciously are and you do a really good job of sort of displaying that in the movie i think that's one of the most interesting elements of it is sort of that you know that legacy that you talk about i mean yeah. i think that's fun um in, ter in terms of like, it's just you talk about this being a poor, a ho uh, I mean, a personal film. You know, it's also somewhat. I mean, I don't know if you want to s call it horror. I mean, I'm sure it. Gets I would say mystery. It, it, it's a thriller more than okay, anything. Okay, yeah, let's go with throw. Yeah. But <laughs> what is it like to basically live out sort of a nightmare of your own? Like it's your own sort of personal nightmare in some ways. Is that kind of a weird? Is it therapeutic? Is it absolutely therapeutic? You know, it's I, I think it's the best thing that you can do as a filmmaker, you know, and, and and I invite, you know, everybody to, to do that kind of things because in the process, I have to recognize that the process is sometimes you suffer a lot because you're yeah. touching you're touching the, the wounds, you know, and 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 sometimes it's, you feel that kind of um, um, that kind of uh, hurting feeling when you're touching that. But at the end of the at the end of the tunnel, it's very very healthy, you know, to do that. And I did it in in in, in intruders. I, I I play myself, you know, in 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 the sense that I put personal feelings and and and, and disturbing thoughts that I had when I was a kid. And I was exploring the, those thoughts during the movie because, you know, I, I lived in a very a strange atmosphere at that time. And I realized, you know, when later on that it was it was because uh, there were several secrets that my parents didn't tell me and protecting me doing that. They didn't know that they were creating uh, a worst monster, which is your fantasy and, and your and your. You're, because you know when you when you perceive something in the reality that nobody is telling you, then you create different interpretations that probably is, is going to be worse than the reality itself. So that's that's the that's the problem. And one of the most interesting things about this, as you talk about, you know, that legacy of secrets and stuff like that, is um, sort of like the inadvertent transmission of stuff. Because you know, like Clive Owen's character is sort of a vessel for this fear to be carried on to, you know, daughters and stuff like that. What exactly is it? Because he's not necessarily conscious of the whole picture until the end. How, how do you feel exactly, you know, do you feel like perhaps because your parents didn't do it, there's somehow that you turned it to, say, your kids or something like that, even though you weren't aware necessarily of the depth of the secret? What is that exactly, you know? Is it just the way we're uh, affected by those secrets that then 
be pushed onto our children or something like that because he wasn't necessarily forcing the secret onto his kid in the movie, but yet she seems to be caught up in it nevertheless. Yeah. yeah. So th I think that the, the, the attitude w which is driving, dr driven me, you know, to, to make this movie is that feeling that we have to be responsible w with kids, you know, and, and as a father, you have to think about your life and I think you have to go to those dark places and trying to solve that by yourself in order to prevent that that dark things are passing on the next generation and are passing to your kids, you know. That, that, that's why I think to, to play with these ideas in, in a mystery horror movie like this one is a very, um, is a very I think it's very healthy in all, in, all, in all the levels because I think it's some kind, in, in a way, this movie is some kind of invitation to the audience for going to those places and and trying to cure themselves you know well there's also like this element of you know you talk about it being a personal story and i imagine that putting a personal story on film for the world to see is difficult enough but not only is it personal but it's your personal fears did you have any sort of you know i hate to say fear because that's repeating that word but did you have any sort of hesitation to put your fears out in the world for the world to see, you know? It's Not in the beginning of the process, to be honest, because it was a very excitement uh, feeling when I when I decided to go deep. But I have to confess that when I was in the middle of the process, I, I suffered uh, several nightmares that, that, it, that you know, it, it put me in a very difficult situation sometimes because I, I, I couldn't sleep. And you imagine when you're shooting a movie and you don't sleep, you're in trouble. And, but it was funny. I, I, I felt some uh, strange feelings like the boy in the movie. You remember there is a sequence mm -hmm. in, the, in the movie that the boy uh, th uh, thinks that the monster is just behind him, but is completely attached yeah, to his back. Right, so yeah. you, you can't, you, you, he can't see him, you know? I, I, I got that fear, you know, when I was watching, was shooting the movie, and it was terrible. And how did you come up with a... a um a creature, I don't know what you want to call him, like hollow face. I mean, I thought it was, especially that opening scene was really a powerful, powerful way to begin the film. How, how did you come up with that idea of, you know, like some a creature that basically takes away your mouth, your eyes, and sort of like becomes you? Because there's, there's, there's multiple levels that that's creepy, you know. A, you know, losing your life, so to speak be someone becoming you and essentially taking it over. How do, how do you sort of come up with that kind of creature? I mean, the only thing I can even th sort of think of that was like it was Coraline. I don't know if you remember that movie yeah. where they wanted to yeah, take true. her eyes fantastic. and sew the button eyes yeah, and stuff like that. fantastic like movie, that one. I love that movie. Yeah. And because I, in a way, it touches in a visual way the, 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 same, the same concept. It comes from, from trying to visualize in the monster the the concept of the movie, which is looking for the identity, you know, I think the the big thing in the story is uh, you don't know who you are, because you know there is something happening when you, when when your parents are taking you out from those events that they thought that it's not good to tell you, they are stealing your identity if they do that. Uh, that's a really that's a really interesting way to sort of think about that and then sort of take that into a visual. Medium. Exactly, and then playing with that, playing with that idea, we try to visualize that in the monster, like a representation of that idea, and then we found, I think, the idea about not to use the face. I mean, a monster without a face, without identity, and especially from the perspective of the monster, he desperately needs a face to steal because he wants to be, he wants to, be, he he wants to exist, you know, and and that kind of human dilemma in a monster creates in my opinion the 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 human um the human side of the story which is going to be uh, which is will be uh, solved at the end of the movie because you know i think this movie is like a journey and and you i think we go through different different steps of the of the of the story but finally we f we end up in in a very human resolution which is something that i that i felt very very uh, satisfy about about you know in a general concept. Mm. 
Um, so, you know, it's been a while since 28 Weeks Later, you've got this coming out. Obviously, I'm very curious to see, you know, what are you doing next? What What do you have after Intruder? I mean, I'm, this, it's been touring around the world at this point. I imagine it's going to come to America in the near future. Do you have plans for what's next after this? Or I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm working on several projects, as you as you can yeah, imagine. Very, you're hoping, <laughs> hoping I'll you know, escape. But I, hope, I promise, I think, I think I can promise you that my next movie will be in Two years, maybe. I, I two years or two that. years and a half, maybe. Okay. Okay. And 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 you know, I'm trying several projects, but it and it, but it seems like probably one of the best contenders to to be my next movie is Highlander, the the wow. reboot of Highlander. I'd heard, so I'd let's heard see, let's that. see. That would, that would be an intriguing let's see, thing let's to see. reevaluate because that was. We I have remember to keep that our so fingers crossed. So strongly during the '90s that it was. A, yeah, I think like, it's a fantastic uh, scenario, and uh, and you know the the characters are amazing. I love the the, the idea about the immortality as a curse, you know, yeah. which is the main the main thing of the story. There, there can only be one, which yeah. is like one of the best taglines ever. Yeah. Um, do you have a website or a Twitter or anything that people can check on to see updates? Yeah, J J C Fresnadillo is my is my Twitter name, so everybody could find me there. And, and I would love to share, you know, any thought with, 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 with you guys. So feel free to do it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Juan Carlos. My pleasure. Um, and you can find more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thank you. Thank you.